Okay, we're going to go through the machine operation with the uh, General Junior machine now. Uh, so we're going to go through everything, including uh, installing a tool into the collet. Uh, we're going to go through the entire machine operation, how to set up uh, material, how to go through uh, zero with the coordinates, and so on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the machine and we're going to remove the, the uh, router and we're going to install the tool that we're going to use for this project. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the router and we're going to install the tool that we're using for this particular project. So, first thing we need to do, of course, is unplug the router. And using our Allen wrench that should be supplied with your machine, we're going to loosen the clamp, remove the router, and we're going to be using the collet and a uh, quarter inch, or the collet nut and a quarter inch collet, because the tool we're going to use for this particular project has a quarter inch shaft. Put it on here, spin it on, and we're going to install the bit. Tend to leave a little bit of the shaft extended on the bit. You don't want to leave too much out because you will have a little bit of vibration. And there are two collet wrenches supplied with the machine. And we're just going to tighten up the collet, the collet nut drop the router back in. Now the router is adjustable, so you can fully seat it to the bottom, but the tool will be extended a fair ways out uh, at the bottom. Uh, you can also lift it up a little bit if you'd like, uh, and it would depend on the thickness of your material. Sometimes you're, you're going to need to lift the router up just so you can get the clearance that you need. So I'm just going to lift it up a little bit and tighten up our Allen bolts again. They're getting snug. And plug our machine back on. Okay, so our tools installed and we're ready to go. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to secure our material. So we have these clamps that have been supplied with the machine. You can use several different clamping strategies. Sometimes I will actually screw the material down to the sacrificial board. In this particular case, I'm just going to use the supplied clamps. Just push the clamp up. I've already got the one at the back tightened. Just push the one at the front up against the material. Tighten it up with the Allen wrench. And then just using the lever, secure the part in place. And now our material is secure and ready to go. So everything is ready to start the machining operation. The next thing that we're going to look at is the controller. Okay, so this is our control box on the side of the machine. And uh, you see that we have three USB ports. In this particular case, we're using a wireless uh, mouse and uh, keyboard. But if you had a hardwired mouse and keyboard, then you would have uh, both of these uh, USBs connected to your keyboard and your mouse. Uh, the third USB is for our thumb drive, which will be what we'll use for file transfer. So first thing we need to do is make sure that our emergency stop button is not engaged. We have to make sure that's released. Push the power button. Whenever you push the power button, if you would have heard that bump, that would let us know that the motors are being powered up. Um, so we know we have power to our motors. You can see that the screen is firing up. So it's, uh, it's activating our control system. And it should be up here momentarily. The software should automatically uh, load itself. You'll see the general CNC logo pop up to let you know that the software is loading. Now one of the functions and features of uh, the, control, uh, con uh, the control software is we have what's called a deep freeze option on it. So the, uh, if any of the calibration settings are ever changed in the uh, computer system, you can literally shut the machine down and turn it back on again and everything is reset back to factory. So there's never uh, a problem with uh, uh, viruses, there's never a problem with uh, anybody changing a calibration setting because we can restore that all by just reshutting shutting the machine off and returning it back on. Now, one of the first things that you will need to do once you turn on the, or once the software is loaded, if you look down here in the bottom right corner, there's a reset button. You'll notice that there's a red ring around it right now. If I click the reset button, you'll notice that it now turns green. That now activates the controller software. So until you do that, nothing is functional within the controller software. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install our program into the USB port. And everything is done with a thumb drive. So you can see I've got a USB thumb drive here, which the file that we just created, our bulldog that we're going to be running today, uh, is 
is on that. So I very simply just plug the uh, USB thumb drive into the USB port and it will read the file off of the USB thumb drive. You can uh, direct transfer the uh, file from the USB drive to the hard drive of this computer because this is just a standard Windows computer. The problem is that it's the next time that the, the computer is shut down and turned back on again, that's going to be gone. So don't use it as a storage. Uh, don't use the, the PC as storage. I tend to run it right off the thumb drive, which if you're going to do that, remember that you can't pull the thumb drive out during operation. So the first thing that we do when we start the machine up is we want to home the machine. The, the machine has um, what we call, a, it has limit switches on all three axes and has a home position. And this particular machine, that home position is the top left corner. So if I click the home all button, if you uh, can uh, just watch the machine here for a second, what the machine's doing right now is it's uh, making contact with all three of the limit switches so it knows exactly where uh, the start position, we call it the uh, machine zero or the uh, machine uh, home position and it's in the top left corner or the bottom left corner of this particular machine. You can see that it's already stopped its operation. Once again, we'll go back to the screen. Okay, so we've homed the machine and if I click on display machine coordinates, you can see that it shows us the X, the Y, and the Z coordinates are zero. So that tells us the machine is now in the home position. I'm gonna shut those back off again. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to load the G-code file that we've created. So we click on load G-code. Go to my computer, and we've got it on our thumb drive. We're going to get it to read all files. And you'll see that it's a bulldog.tap, that's the file that we've created. We're going to open that up. Now, when it loads, you'll notice that the bulldog is up here in the top right hand corner. Um, where it's positioned is really not all that relevant at this point because what we're going to do is we're going to zoom and pan this. So I'm going to click on the zoom button and by using my roller on my mouse I can zoom in. I can also click the pan button and bring this into the center of my screen. This doesn't in any, in any way affect the way this is going to machine. It's strictly a visual so that we can get a good look at what our image is looking at as it's machining. So there's our bulldog, as you can see, there's lots of blue and red lines there. All that is showing is the various tool paths or the various uh, positions that the tool is going to take as it's doing the machining operation. And you can see down here all of the G-code commands. So these are all the various commands that the tool will be given uh, to move from position to position uh, as it's doing the machining operation. So we loaded our program and now what we need to do is we need to position our tool so that we can start the machining operation. So next what we're going to do is we're going to position the tool so that it's at the top or the bottom left corner of this particular work uh, because when we created this project we chose the bottom left corner of the work as the origin position. Now as you can see the machine is sitting in the home position right now which is at machine coordinate zero zero but we want the tool to be at the corner of this piece of material when we start this project because that's the program coordinate or the program zero. Now in this particular case we've measured this and from this corner where the tool currently sits to the corner here is a half inch across the x-axis or from right to left and or, uh, from left to right sorry and it's five inches from uh, the, uh, the corner on the y-axis or moving up the table. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually command the tool, uh, the, the software, to move the tool to that position so that we can set our origin position. So what we're now going to do is we're going to um, command the tool to go to the corner of the workpiece that we've put on the machine. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to zero our x and y coordinates. So what we've established first of all is we've established that at this point the uh, machine coordinates and the program coordinates are the same. You see if I click on display machine coordinates, they're zeros. If I take them off, the program coordinates are the same. We're going to use this input line and I want to show you a couple of things this input line is capable of doing. Uh, the first thing that it's capable of doing is it's ch it can change um, some uh, parameters on the machine. For example, right now you see we have the feed rate set at 100 inches a minute, which is probably the last project that was run and may have uh, run at 100 inches a minute. Well, the, the uh, command in G-code for uh, feed rate is the letter F. So if I change this to letter F70, so if I click on uh, F70 and hit enter, you can see it changes the feed rate to 70 inches a minute. So whenever I move the tool now, it's going to move at 70 inches a minute by default. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, uh, 
we're going to move the tool now to the corner of the workpiece as we've determined we, we want to start our project at the bottom left corner of our work. And so you can see that we've uh, zeroed our coordinates, our X and Y coordinates to zero to match our machine coordinates. So if these were set at a different number, uh, what you'd want to do is zero the X and zero the Y. And you can see now that the machine coordinates and the program coordinates are identical. So what we're going to use is this input line. And this input line actually has several different functions. Um, if I type in a command, it will actually tell the tool to do a particular thing. For example, right now you can see right now we have a feed rate at 70 inches a minute. And that may be the last project that we ran would have had a, a feed rate at 70 inches. If I wanted to change that feed rate to 100 inches a minute, all I have to do is go to the input line, type in F100, hit the enter key, and you can see that it's changed that feed rate because the F command is a command in G-code for uh, changing a feed rate. If I wanted to, for example, turn the spindle on manually, you can see I have a button here to do that, spindle on and off. But if I, if I wanted to, I could actually type in the command line, just click on it, MO3, which is a command, it's a universal command in G-code to turn a spindle on. And the spindle turns on. I can hit MO5. MO5 is a universal command to shut the spindle back off. So that's what the input line is designed to do. What we're going to do in this particular case is we're going to type in a specific coordinate. Now on our table, we actually have coordinate positions of X. 0.5 inches, I'm going to put a space, I'm going to type in Y, 5.0 inches, because our workpiece is exactly half an inch off the uh, corner by uh, half inch on the X and, and five inches on the Y, and when I hit the enter key, the tool will have automatically moved to the corner of the workpiece. So you'll see as we commanded the tool to do, the spindle, uh, the tool has moved from the corner where it was uh, originally in the home position and it's now moved so that the tool is sitting exactly over the corner of the workpiece. So now we have established the X and Y coordinates at zero and the only thing left to do is we're going to, on our controller, we're now going to zero our X and Y coordinates to establish this as the new uh, program zero. So now that we've established the, or moved the tool to the corner of our workpiece, we need to make sure that we zero the X and zero the Y coordinates. So we've zeroed the X and Y, the only thing left to do now is to establish our uh, Z coordinate. And in order to do that, we're going to use our tool sense plate. So the General Junior machine comes with a tool sensing plate. It's this aluminum plate here. It's a quarter inch thick plate. And what we're going to do is we're going to position that plate directly underneath the tool. So the tool is sitting above that left hand corner. I'm going to position the plate. And now we're going to close the safety interlock doors on the cabinet. And now what we'll need to do is we'll need to zero the coordinate, uh, or sorry, sorry, we'll need to touch off this uh, plate with the tool sensing uh, device that's in the controller and establish our Z coordinate. Okay, because we had the interlock doors open, you can see that our reset button is now set back to red again, so we need to make sure that we reset that. And you can see that the green ring is around it to let us know that we're live again. So what we're going to go do is we're going to go down here to the tool sense button. It's down here by the home all button and the soft limits. We click on it, it's uh, going to give us an opportunity to ensure that we have a plate underneath the, uh, the tool, so we're going to say OK. And when we click on this, the tool sensing plate is going to come down and touch off that plate and establish our, uh, our, uh, the top of our material. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to um, hit OK and the tool, sense is going to come, the tool sensor is going to come down. And all it's really doing is it's just grounding. So the tool is going to make contact with that aluminum plate. And when it does, the tool is going to lift up a quarter of an inch off of the plate. So it's going to be sitting exactly a half an inch above the material. So it's going to lift up by a quarter of an inch, plus the plate the thickness is a half an inch. So the tool is sitting now exactly a half inch above the, of the, above the material. And if we look on the uh, screen, what you'll see on the screen is that our coordinate for our z-axis is now set at a half an inch. So as you can see on the screen up here in the top right hand corner, our, our z coordinate is set at a half an inch. Now it's important to note, it's a common mistake that's made, do not zero the z-axis at this point because the z-axis is already set at a half an inch and we know that the tool is sitting exactly a half an inch above the workpiece. So it's exactly where we want it to be. So do not reset this dead axis, so let it sit at half an inch. Okay, so the last step in the operation for us is we're going to 
uh, start the machine, we've tool sensed, so we've established our Z position at half an inch, our X and Y coordinates are zero, and the tool is sitting on the corner of the material. So now when we hit the start button, the spindle will turn on.